Hey everybody, this is Terry. I wanted to give everybody a quick update on what I've been up to. Uh, as you can see, we got a little bit different uh, project in the shop today. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, my little pickup, I've been trying to finalize some of the stuff that I have been needing to do for the fuel injection. Um, originally, when I bought the throttle uh, cables and the brackets and everything, I, I got that off of like a 95 GM pickup in salvage. And I got the detent cable for the uh, transmission as well, because it kind of looked like it might be able to work for a turbo 350. Well, it doesn't. So after doing some research, I got this cable here, which is fully adjustable in length. And what'll happen is I'll have to figure out where I want all this at. And then I'll, I don't like the way that looks, so I'll probably uh, drill a piece of round stock and take it over to the press and press that on there and maybe silver solder it to kind of clean it up a little bit. Uh, but it does do what it's supposed to do down below. It does hook up. Uh, you can see through the little hole there, right, right in that area right there, right there. I went ahead and welded the O2 sensor bone in. Uh, put the O2 sensor in, went ahead and put the headers on, the gaskets in, put the collector gaskets in. Uh, on this side here, I needed a port for a, a coolant temp sensor, uh, which helps control the fuel injection and the ECM. So this here literally took all day to put that in. And I'll show you why. Originally it comes like this. You see that? It's, you know, they're just your square headed pipe plug. Well, you can always play general after the war. I should have probably removed that where it went before the head went on, you know, and I could have heated it up a little bit with a torch. Uh, this one here actually still has to come out because this one here is going to be for my uh, temperature gauge. So I have to get this one out yet. Uh, normally, Normally this sensor here would be mounted on the intake somewhere in this area here. But if you remember, I actually put this port in. It had this port up here underneath where the air AC compressor is and they had another one over here where the uh, alternator is. And I moved all that and I probably should have put this one back in and that sensor could have went there. But like I said, you can always play general after the war. So what ended up happening is it literally took me all day to get, this, get that plug out of there. Uh, I couldn't drill a hole through that plug, no matter what I did. Uh, it was probably heat treated a thousand times since 1960 when these heads were made. So it was pretty damn hard. I actually had to resort to getting an all carbide drill bit just to get a hole through it, then step up until the, I get to the size I need. And I actually took an air file and honed it out so I could see some threads and I got a chisel in there and picked it out all the threads and put this in. Like I said though, it literally took all day to do that. Um, yeah, I didn't want to get a torch out because the, the head's painted already and you don't want to mess that up. So, you live and you learn. Uh, I know I can get the other one out now. Uh, I've been looking at some of the wiring on the uh, fuel injection. I've been looking at the plugs and plug wires. I'm going to get all that stuff together. I'm going to have, go ahead and have a gauge, fuel pressure gauge up here. I don't like what I've got here right now, so I ordered a different part to kind of clean, shorten this length of this assembly up a little bit, uh, kind of make it look a little bit better. Um, that stuff is all still coming. I started moving towards uh, doing the transmission cooler lines. Uh, I'm waiting on some parts to come for that, some AN6 hose separators. Uh, I ordered them off eBay and they, they're coming from China. I bought eight of them for 15 bucks. You can't beat that. Uh, I think some of their jags are uh, quite substantially more expensive than that. But I've actually got the, the transmission cooler lines terminated at the transmission and I'm waiting here to make sure of where all the hoses are going to hang before I do the, the terminations back here. 
And then I went ahead and added the cooler temp sensor for the fan for the cooler. That's what that is. So we're waiting on that to get done. Uh, the fuel injection, the wiring, and stuff like that. I went ahead and brought out the uh, painless wiring kit. I need to figure out where up in this area here, this is on the driver's side, uh, where all of uh, the ECM is going to be mounted and the fuse box. And once I nail down that, I can make another knee bolster to cover all this up, kind of make it match that one over there. And that'll clean all that up, I hope, would hope. Now, as far as the wiring that came with my fuel injection kit, it didn't come with a coil. So I went to the salvage yard and got a coil. I didn't get it for the coil. I got it because of the brackets for it and also got it for the map sensor. And what I wanted about this, I'm not gonna use this map sensor and, and my kit came with this plug here. What I wanted was this line, this hose here. It connects to the back of the TBI. I know that I'll have to make my own mounting for the coil and the map sensor which I am planning on using this little plastic piece that screws onto whatever it is I build. I wanted this for length purposes as far as if I decided to use the factory uh, vacuum line, how far away can I get this before it's too far or too close. I wanted this for distance purposes. And I can say the same thing for the coil wire. I wanted to have it for the distance away too because I want to make the bracket that holds this and this a one assembly type deal. So with that said, now my kit for my fuel injection came with this plug here. This goes into the distributor, but at the end of it you get new wires and they're just, they're just bare wires. There's no plugs for here. So that's another one of the reasons why I had to go to the salvage yard and get some of these, these set of plugs right here because I needed those. I don't know why it didn't come with my kit, but whatever. And this one here goes to the tack. This Y one here goes to the tack, I believe. Uh, so anyway, we're kind of kind of moving forward on it a little bit, but I'm waiting on some parts, uh, pretty important parts. So I guess while I was waiting on parts, my friend called me and wanted to know if I could help him on this a little bit. Uh, what we're doing on this is we're getting it ready to go to our frame shop here in town and have this frame modified to accept a six second badge. And by that I mean it, uh, they're going to make the frame so it'll be certified to go six seconds. And we had to cut some stuff off of it. Some of the bars that he doesn't want on there any or need on there anymore. He's already had it down there and they've told him what goes, what stays, and what they're going to do. So we've been working on getting rid of the bars that he doesn't want on there anymore. And the reason why we're doing that is because I guess this guy charges like $50 an hour to move, remove that shit. And it takes a little while to cut that shit off of them bars and grind the welds down. The pipe itself doesn't cut very hard, but when you get to the, uh, the welding part of it, where it was welded on there, it kind of slows down a little bit. But this car is super light. A person can pick this up at the front course there's nothing there's nothing really to it right now but he's getting new new fiberglass doors for this and we're removing all of the the tin work all the floors all of this all this stuff here is going to go away and it'll be all replaced new uh, but I thought you guys might see this is what I'm talking about right here this is what we got to do we cut this off yesterday and now it just needs to be ground and dressed and you know, we got some of this stuff here that we got to do. They're adding another, some more bars in the ceiling, the roof area of it. But like these guys right here, we cut those off. Those are a little motherfuckers to get to. Pardon my language. But anyway, that's what we're doing on this. This is actually the same guy that has the uh, golf cart that I painted. And, uh, so anyhow, hope everybody had an awesome 4th of July, a day late, but me and Julie did, we hung out in the garage with Shelby and went out when it got dark and lit off some fireworks and that was about it. 
I guess that's what happens when you get older. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.